complete that poll for me real quickly. <coughs> Does everybody have that pulled up so I can actually put the poll up? Or are you still typing it in? I don't want to. Type it down, but it will. Okay, all right. Working for everybody. Just doesn't like you, Marilyn. Just doesn't like you. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Well, hopefully, it's going to allow me to click on this and show you your responses. It's going to be our conversation starter here. Okay. And we'll look at responses. So there's more than eight in here, but. All right, so how many times have you interacted so far with your community partner? Does this surprise you? We're how far into the semester? Halfway. Halfway. Expected that? Surprised by that? Why might the number of responses be where we see them? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Quiet, yes. Um, well, my practice partner is um, not in the Lafayette area, so it's okay. just harder to find like free time to go and visit them. Okay, all right. How, yeah. I feel like some people's project partners might also be like on opposite ends of the globe. So uh, okay. Communicating with them is very difficult because of you know time changes okay. and everything. All right. Other other challenges or reasons? Yeah. Uh, developing communities that don't have access to as uh, to calling or emails. Okay. So would any of you like this to be more than what it is? Yes. Yes. Any of you like it to be less? You talk to your partner all the time and you're just tired of talking to them? No. I mean, you could be honest and hear if you want to. So we're designing projects for people, but we don't get to interact with them enough. Is that a fundamental problem? Can be. Yeah. Can be. I think it's a challenge, right? It's a design challenge that we have to think about, right? Today we're going to talk a lot about community partner interactions and a little bit about how, oh shoot, I hit the wrong button, how we prevent failure. Um, and I wanted to go down and in the last one, just talk a little bit about this. So how have you interacted with them? So this is actually a pretty high number that have been out to the actual site, because usually when I do this we don't get very many. Oh, sorry. That's okay. There we go. Okay. Usually we don't get a lot of students that are actually going out to the site, so this is interesting. Does that, how many of you have very local projects that might help? Oh, just, so you've been out there five times? No. I, I have not done the site visit. Oh, you've not done it? Our, well, so our who, our else have been, who else has been out to their site? Okay, where's your project? Bolivia. And you've been to Bolivia? Yeah. Well, okay. we, the whole team has been twice. I've been oh, it's been twice. Okay, all right. I've been Ireland, and you've got to go? Oh, the, wow, gosh, I guess I should have just asked, where have you been? Okay, <laughs> fantastic, right? But it looks like the majority of you have done emails. Now, did your project partner say email was the best way to get a hold of them? I see a head nod here and here, yes. Those that didn't nod, what did they tell you? Did you ask? 
<laughs> honesty over there. No, I don't think we, did. we didn't ask. So that would be, I, this is another sidebar, but that would be one of the most important fundamental things you do is to ask how they want you to communicate with them, right? I personally, Email is fine for me because I'm on email all day long, but my partner can't stand it, and if you want to get a hold of him, you better text him. So if you don't know that about the two of us, then you're going to have a really hard time catching him. You could send him 50 emails, and he will ignore you till tomorrow, the next day, and ever and ever, right? So it's really important to do those kinds of things when you're doing these things. So I want to talk just a little bit about preventing failure is what I'm, I'm dubbing this. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to, to think about these projects, but that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to give you some scenarios. These are real life scenarios, things that have actually happened based on all of the years of experience that I've had and the projects that I've had people talk to me about. And I want you guys to, to walk through them, have moments of ahas where maybe this actually happened to you or happened to someone you know, and let's be honest in thinking about what you do to address the scenario, okay? So I've got three different ones. And I'd like you to kind of get into maybe small groups. Can we do like, I don't know, we could probably do sort of like maybe three in a group. So maybe the three of you could do this scenario. Here's another scenario. How about the three of you do a scenario? Here's a third one. The two of you, wanna, or maybe the two of you could do this. That way we're kind of divided up a little bit. And we can do the two of you could do that. Here's another scenario. And I'm going to give you guys, we'll have the, maybe the three of you could do that one. How's that sound? I'm going to give you guys about five minutes to kind of read through the scenario, talk about it, and then we're going to share out what you think, what you would do. Again, these are real world things that have actually happened. I see smiles. Maybe this actually happened to you. <laughs> Do you want to put on my shirt? Yeah, perfect. Okay. That's probably it. Yeah. It's all you. Jay Hack right kept it out. Oh, I know. I know. I won't. And the story of my life the last few weeks. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It'll be a teachable moment. We can talk about it. Yeah. We're on it. Yeah. Okay, you guys have a plan? Yeah. Have a plan? Okay, so let's start with scenario two. We're going to start with scenario two. We're going to start out of order, all right? So the first scenario, your teammate sends you the following email to your instructor. What would you do? So who's my team scenario twos? Right here? Okay, so what, what was your initial reaction? Well, tell, tell everybody a little bit about your scenario real quickly, and then um, we'll get okay, it. So the scenario is there's a lack of communication between the school members and their community partner, and they're asking um, if they can skip class because they can't do any assistant work um, without further communication. Okay. So what'd you do? What would you do? How would you address this? Uh, I mean, we just said that means like, there's always work to be done that doesn't need input from your community partner, like be it just like semester planning or mm -hmm. documentation or anything. So like, I don't feel like there's ever a good excuse to just skip class. Well, and you should probably never tell your professor that being in class is pointless, right? That's <laughs> probably a bad thing to put in the email anyway, right? Yeah, okay. What, what else? What else would you do? What did you guys say? What would you do with this scenario? Um, what were your thoughts? Well, we had said that um, just 
in general, the scenario is a little vague in that we don't know how many times they've emailed Mike. So mm -hmm. maybe following up um, with the community partner liaison and just being like, hey, I sent you this email before, or just follow up and say, yeah. can you give us a little more information? Because um, it could have been one email three weeks ago and they still haven't heard anything back, but that right. could get lost in the shuffle. Sure, and, and, if, and if you do email again and you still don't hear anything, what do you do? Bueller, Bueller, hello. Like phone, try the phone, right? Pick up the phone, try that. Have, has, have any of you called your partner? A couple of you? How did those conversations go? Um, it goes better with us. I think he's more like that's like an easier way for him to communicate, okay. and especially through text. Like it's so quick to get a response, whereas like an email is like a week mm -hmm. or two, and then like you have to do the follow up. Yeah. So just kind of depends on what you're trying yeah. to get at. Okay, so sometimes phone, sometimes the phone works better. I mean, that just sometimes, again, like some people are good with phones, some people are good with emails, but I think that's a good approach. Anybody just offended by the fact that maybe just one of the students in the team sent this but didn't actually talk to in, any of the other team, teammates? How would you handle that internally as a team? If you had one teammate that was just randomly doing things, what, what would you do? I think yeah. this is a sign that Yeah, it's a very good point. So what's your role and how are you going to interact and what is expected of each teammate, right? So those are really important things that have nothing to do with your community partner but can directly impact your community partner, right? Okay, how about, um, let's go back to scenario one. You're a team leader on a community engagement project. You're a, you arrange a site visit with a partner. You've been sick, you don't show up. Well, guess what, nobody else did. So let me ask you this, how did it make you guys feel when I showed up 10 minutes late today? Be honest. Did you do it on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I did. And I thought I would try and pull that off. And I'm like, that's not honest. But, but it could prove a really good point, right? How did it make you feel? You can be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's the problem, right? It's, it's no, that's normal, but that's not OK, right? That is not OK, because it makes you feel terrible, doesn't it? And I felt bad. I was in a meeting with the provost. I didn't have a choice, but it's unfair because what that meant is that I was prioritizing that over you, right? And that's a terrible message to send. Now, this is really bad because no one showed up, right? Yeah, right? Doesn't matter. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. You guys are, you're the clients of the university. In many ways, I would argue you're more important, right? Yeah, you pay the bills. Ultimately, you pay the bills. But, but the point is, is that any time this happens, it makes you feel terrible. And it, it, no matter what, it's kind of like someone once told me that when you give someone an excuse as to why you can't do something, then you're automatically saying that whatever you can't, you're going to do is more important than being with that person or spending time with them or addressing their task. So just say no. And no, can't do it. I'm trying to learn that one. But so what do you do in this situation? No one showed up. What do you do? Team scenario ones, what did you guys, what did you do? Uh, you were smiling, Does, did this happen to you? No. Okay, because you were acting like, oh. Well, not to be honest. Okay. Um, uh, we just like first like apologize, obviously. Like, yeah. Like, apologetic email, like, yeah. however you communicate with that. And then um, kind of figure out what happened within the group. Like, right. Like, like what the misunderstanding was within the group and then also once you figure that out, like try and set up maybe another day and make sure that misunderstanding is very clear. Yeah. Like the second, like the next time you. Right. Date. Grovel a lot. Yes. How about you guys? What did you? Um, yeah, we feel like we have to do a lot of damage control because, it's, like you said, like it's not yeah. just one person; it's like the entire team. And then yeah. um, she had the really good point of like flipping the apology to appreciation because. Like when you just say, I'm sorry, I was late, I was doing this, it brings it back on you. Whereas like, it's really about how like their time was wasted basically. Mm -hmm. and how it's like, we really appreciate you for being patient and you are still working with us. And yeah. Just trying to maintain that relationship. Yeah. And, and that's a really positive spin on it. You know, like, I, I mean, I could tell you guys, I'm really sorry for not showing up. But at the end of the day, what is more effective is saying, you know, I, I thank you for waiting. Like your time is valuable and I didn't mean to be late and it won't happen again. But I want you guys to get a lot out of this. So th those are the, those are important, like psychological things that you can do. Right. And then, of course, you address it with your team and try to make sure that never happens again. And things happen. But again, it's just you don't want them to happen consistently. 
The third one, your team is tutoring an after-school program for at-risk youth, so you can develop plans for a new tutoring software. You hear from another student that the community partner is upset because your team has been wearing offensive phrasing on t-shirts. How do you respond via email, conversation? What do you say? So we only had one team that had this one. What did you guys do with this one? Um, I mean, I went, uh, we kind of differed in response slightly, but uh, she would actually respond, we want to talk with them directly mm -hmm. um, and try to find out what's actually going on. Sure. Oh. You won't actually hear your voice, it just talks into it. Sure. Um, so uh, we want to have a conversation with them directly okay. um, and try to find out what's offensive uh, or who's been wearing it or what exactly is going mm -hmm. on. Get right. more information on it. And then uh, next time we'd show up, we'd probably all make sure to wear something plain like what I'm wearing. So right. there's, there's nothing on it or if it's certain mm -hmm. colors or something like that, uh, right. we'll work with it. Right. Um, however, I also noticed that this is from another student of the community partner, so yeah. I would want to check with the community partner directly Right. that that's actually the case. Otherwise, we're kind of working off of hearsay, and right. I'm not and sure how reliable that is. Right, and you could be creating a problem that maybe doesn't even exist, right? So you, yeah. yeah, you've got to be kind of careful. What was your different approach? You said you guys had a different approach? Oh, I, mean, I guess ours was like a little more similar than I... Okay. It was, that was a very well, like, well explained version. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just didn't comprehend it very well. So, um. Okay. <laughs> but, but the point is, is to check in first, yeah. right? So to make sure there, there actually is a problem and then get together as a team and really think about how you can address it. I mean, you know, when you think offensive phrasing, I mean, it, it could just be something as, as simply as colors that are offensive because maybe it symbolizes a gang activity in that, that school if you're going to a school, right? So there's things that you may not be aware of that you're intentionally doing that you just want to make sure you would be addressing with your partner, right? Okay. Very good. Has, have any of these situations happened to any of you? No. I usually every, get, always get a couple students that had the actual didn't show up for a yeah. one kind of thing. Yeah. We had um, at least this semester we ended up splitting into like three groups within my team. Okay. But, um, so we knew for sure that we had one project to work on, but then we hadn't heard back from the project partner about oh, it's gonna be any real hard. of the Sorry. other things to do. Sure. If you just don't like yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Um, but we hadn't. So we knew we had one thing for sure to work on, but mm -hmm. then um, the other two like groups essentially that we had had nothing to work on because we hadn't heard back from the project partner for about three weeks. Wow. Yeah. So that took a lot of our time mm -hmm. away from time that we could have had for those projects. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think it really speaks to relationship building, though. I mean, you can't do these projects if you don't have relationships with your partners, right? And it takes a lot of time, and I think sometimes in the settings that you're in, you're forced to make that relationship within like the first week, right? Mm -hmm. And hope that it's a good relationship. And that's hard to do. So I think you also have to remember that you're probably gonna constantly be working on that relationship as, over the course of the semester, and it's not gonna be perfect right away, just because of the nature of how your projects are set up, right? And the semester timelines that you guys are on. So I wanted to go over a quick top 10 ways to prevent failure. So all of these top 10 came from our community partners. So we did a focus group with community partners and we asked them, what are the ways in which project fails and what, what do you want me to tell the students? And so I'm gonna quickly go through the top 10 just to give you a sense of, of the kind of missteps that we all perhaps could participate in so that you'll know when you go into your projects what not to do, right? And I think all of these are obvious in many ways, but it doesn't mean necessarily that we avoid them. All right, the top 10, all right. Lack of research. So this is, this is a big one here. You have to do more than just Google your partner, right? Which is, a lot of you, I think, do a lot more depth when it comes to research. But sometimes I think we forget about the real important piece, and that's our stakeholders, right? So we, we spend a lot of time looking up who these people are online. We spend a lot of time talking to other students, maybe talking to faculty about the projects. But we don't spend a lot of time actually getting to know our partners. And that is a challenge for you all because that really means going on site, right? And it's hard to do that based on the constraints of a lot of your projects. But are there ways that you could get creative? Could you do some more Google Hangouts or some Skypes or some things like that? Just more informal settings where you could get to know your partner a little bit more so that when you're designing for them and with them, you're not just creating something in a vacuum, all right? So do more than just Google. Right? And you've all done that, right? Yes, you will do that. Okay, good, good. Number nine, time. 
time, time, time. So every project always takes longer than what you've expected, right? This surely has been the case for all of your projects, so make sure you allow for it. Any design process is going to be this iterative back and forth and revision and revise process, right? You're never going to get it right the first time, so you've got to allow for that. You have to allow for that community partner to have a bad week where they don't communicate with you. Maybe a bad three weeks where they don't communicate with you. So how can you build those into your work plans and your scope of work that you're doing in class so that you can make sure that you're getting these projects done in the time period that you're allowed? And I will say, too, that completion is a bit of an arbitrary term in many ways. Your projects are very typically not bound by the semester, right? So most of them span the scope of multiple semesters and even multiple years. So I think you have to be re realistic in what you can actually accomplish, too, in that time frame that you have. Because sometimes we want to design the final product, but realistically, we might be best suited just to do a prototype, right? Okay. Lack of planning, lack of planning. Uh, you know it's hard to be organized. And with planning, I think, you know, in class you can do all sorts of planning that you want, but what you really need to do more than anything is really sit down with your partners and talk about expectations. Do you have a shared set of expectations that you're both operating off of? So that when you're planning, you're planning for the same end goal. Do you all feel like you know what your real goals are that are going to be achieved with your projects? Are any of you, yeah? That's good, what is it? Um, oh yeah, sorry for, <laughs> thank you. So with our project, we actually ended up spending these past, like, uh, the first, like, five weeks of our project. The first two weeks, we were just figuring out what teams we were on and okay. what, what, uh, thing we, what project our partner wanted. Good. But then we figured out in the third week and the fourth week that, wait a second, this isn't actually a project that we can do. And okay. in terms of the steps that it would, it would require, it would be a whole lot of legwork that by next semester would either become obsolete or we might need to change the entire thing. Okay. So we ended up meeting with our project partner on week five and figured out that, wait a second, here's what, here's what the problems that we have with what you're asking us to do now. Here's what we think you might actually want mm -hmm. to help solve this problem. Right. And now we've got a more shared expectation of what, we, what we're going to be doing this semester good. and actual steps to move forward. Good. That's really good. That's a really great lear iterative learning process, right, that you went through with both of them, back and forth. Anybody else have a process like that they worked off of, or did you just get your marching order and you moved ahead? All got your marching orders and moved ahead. Did anybody clarify with their partners once they got their marching orders to make sure that you were still moving ahead in the right direction? Yes, you did, or you didn't. How many of you clarified with your partners what you're supposed to be doing once you got your marching orders? Okay. So some of you, like, what, what do you mean cool, this? What does that mean? Uh, like you're not sure or you? Uh, well, ours is, oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> um, our project, we're just making a, a fishing rod for someone who can't. He doesn't have like the physical abilities to fish on okay. his own. So it's been like an ongoing project for the past couple of semesters. And we just kind of like, we've emailed them a couple times mm -hmm. just about like, certain specifics we need to know about the project. Okay. So like it's a like we understand like kind of it's the same thing continuing on and like okay. it's we didn't like specifically ask but it was like kind of like unsaid throughout the con okay. like the emails we could tell like it was still like unchanged okay. what we needed to okay. do. And it still might even benefit from a check-in, right? Yeah. Even a mid-semester, like are we still on the same page? Like, you know, you can ask specific questions about the design, but you might also want to check in are we still ultimately striving for the same thing. That never hurts, right? It never hurts to clarify. Um, all right. Lack of communication. Oh boy, this is always a big one, right? For both, both ways, I think. Um, I'm sure all of you are professional. You treat this as a job. Do you have a regular scheduled call or a way of updating your partners? You all do, right? You all have project liaisons. Is anyone the project liaison for their team in here? Oh. I've done it before. What does that say, you think? Huh, I find this interesting. So all of the individuals that self-selected for this one that probably deals the most with the people related to their projects, none of you are actually the liaison. Maybe next time you should send your project. 
Just a thought. I don't know. This is interesting. Um, do any of you interact with your partners, though, even if you're not the liaison? Yeah? How, how do you interact with your partner? Just emails. Emails? OK. Any other ways? Yeah. Site visits, okay, so you get to see your partner that way, okay. Other things? Yeah? Uh, we do periodical Skype calls. With okay. Uh, well, we have an in-country NGO that kind of relays information. Sure, we can okay, them, good, but, yeah. okay. So you get to have that contact, which is really important. I will say that anytime you're working in community, again, it goes back to that relationship building, it is so important in these projects. And I, and I know that even if you're working with an industry partner or you're doing this for, for a profit, organization, it's still the same way. Relationships matter. So make sure you're communicating in some capacity. Um, it's all about me. This is another reason projects fail. Um, you're not the center of the universe. We all know that as much as we might want to be sometimes. We're not. Um, and, and even your project partner sometimes has the, same, has the same failure, right? They are often the center of their own universe. We all have this. This is a human thing, right? Um, but just keep that in mind, um, especially when you're thinking about deadlines and ask from your partners. You may have a, you know, a final coming up and a, and a project midterm due, but they don't care. Doesn't matter to them, right? That's your universe. So you just want to make sure that you're not necessarily only worrying about your deadlines and, and taking their deadlines into account. If you need something from them very quickly, you might be asking a partner in the middle of their big grant writing week, and they don't have any time for you. All right, so those are just some things to, take, to keep in mind. Um, expecting the partner to dot, dot, dot. Again, the community partner can't always be available. You guys know, please set up regular ways of communicating. I think you have that. It sounds like with a, you guys are all communicating pretty well with your partners. Are there any instances where you're still struggling with your partners? Yeah. Um, mainly our issue with communication with our partner mm -hmm. is that they, they have such a busy schedule that we uh, can't find a good time, time to talk with them that okay. they also don't have a bunch of stuff going on. Right. And so for the weekly meetings, we can do it like, like during then. Sure. Some weeks. And okay. Other weeks they've got stuff going on then. So okay. it's, it's on their end that they're limited in communication. And that it's, at it, least directly. And have you tried to plan out really far with them? Does that work? We've tried to plan a fair bit ahead, mm -hmm. and and so that way we don't need to communicate as often. So long as hey, yes, we're still doing sure. this. Um, but the other part that we're doing is. We tend to work through email, which they can get to while something else is going on somewhat. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas direct calls, when we need to clarify a lot of information, they are not very available for. OK, OK. So it's emails when they have the time. And yeah, and, and that's tough, right? Some of you probably have partners that are just completely zapped on time. And so it's hard for them to find those moments to interact with you. But at the same time, you get to kind of remind them and say, you know, but this project, it does, if it matters, then we do need a little bit of your time. And most people are willing to give that if you kind of have that gut check moment with them. And it might be a matter of finding the time that works for them too. And they may not realize it, but maybe you could suggest, I'm not saying you would want to do this, but well, what about 7.30 in the morning when you're driving to work? Could you have a quick chat then? See, I know eyeballs are big, right? But that might be the time that that partner has available to talk to you. Just something to think about. Or it's probably not evening, unfortunately. It's probably not at night, which would work for you all, but could be morning. Anyway, OK. Um, what we really think is you need, you think you need is, excuse me. So this is, and again, I, I, I really, it really doesn't sound like you all are doing this, but we have to remember we're not designing for. We're designing with, right? So you've got to make sure that you're taking into their account, their information, their, their perspectives, their needs, their wants, right? You don't want to design something that you think they need when in fact they don't actually want it. And it may be the coolest app ever and it might really streamline their operations, but if they don't want it, it's not gonna do you any good to make it. So make sure it's something that they need when you're designing, all right? Um, a usable product. This is where it gets a little squishy sometimes. So you all are brilliant. You have lots of skills. You can, you can develop things that are perhaps really the latest and greatest and coolest looking um, product, but it may not be user friendly for an organization that barely can handle using Microsoft Office. So you have to think about the capabilities of your partner. 
At the same time, you also have to keep in mind that what you're building needs to be professional.